Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome back to another Hard Times recipe where I explore food and recipes from times of food scarcity. Today's recipe comes to me from Marjorie. Marjorie, thank you so much for sharing this recipe. She emailed me with this family recipe for water pie. So apparently Marjorie's grandmother made this recipe during the Great Depression and it's a pie that has a custard that is made predominantly with water. So this particular pie recipe kind of falls under the umbrella of desperation pies. Pies that were made when there was not a lot around, you just used what you had in your pantry. And in the same vein is something called vinegar pie, which was a pie that used vinegar as a flavoring agent for the custard of the pie when fruits were not in season. Another example would be Hoosier milk pie, which comes from Indiana. It's also called sugar milk pie, milk sugar pie, which uses milk and sugar to create the custard for the pie. So I want to tackle all of these pie recipes, but today I'm going to start with water pie. First thing we need to do is make our pie crust. Now this is my favorite pie crust recipe because it comes together really quickly. And this recipe was adapted from pioneer woman's friend Pam's perfect pie crust recipe. So I'll put the link down below in case you're interested. I like to make it in a food processor. One cup of all purpose flour. Now I'm gonna add one stick of butter that has been cut up and is nice and cold. Then I'm gonna pulse this until I get some nice crumbs and all the little pieces of butter are coated with flour. If you don't have a food processor, you can also do this with a pastry blender or a couple of forks. This shouldn't be so hard to open, but it is. Okay, that's what you want it to look like, nice and crumbly. And then we're gonna add our final one quarter of a cup of flour. Next, we're gonna add one tablespoon of sugar. Pulse that in. So the next step is I'm gonna add some icy cold water, an eighth of a cup, which works out to be about a tablespoon and a half of icy cold water. Run the machine and then it'll kind of form a dough. And once it kind of forms a dough in there, stop the machine and then the dough is ready. All right, here we go. On. And do this slowly until it forms a dough. So stop it and then kind of pulse it because sometimes the water collects around the blades. One more. There it goes, you can hear it. Starting to form a dough. So, and as soon as it starts doing that, and a ball of dough starts to form around the blades, we're done. Easy. Pie crust, couldn't be easier. So another thing I like about this pie crust recipe is that you can work the dough right away. Some pie crust recipes say, oh, wrap the dough, put it in the fridge, let it rest before you can roll it out. Yeah, this honey doesn't got time for that, so I like the fact that I can work this right away. Instead of using lots of flour to roll out my dough, I like to use some wax paper, or you can even use plastic wrap. Two pieces of whatever paper you've got, and then place your dough right in the needle. Take out the blade, because we don't need that. Stick any stragglers. And this dough is wonderful. It's really supple, soft, easy to work. So Pam's original recipe calls for a combination of butter and lard, but I just use butter for two reasons. One, I don't usually have lard around, and two, I just love the flavor of an all butter crust. Now I've got it in a little disc. Now I'm gonna take another piece of wax paper and place that right on top, and just roll it out. And because this dough has not been refrigerated, it's really soft and easy to work. When I roll crust, I like to roll from the middle outward and try to maintain a circle if I can. Give it a quarter turn or so as you're working it from the center out, and you can hopefully maintain a round shape, which will help you when you're trying to line the pie pan. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so I've got a nine inch pie dish here, and that looks like it's gonna fit. Now to get into the pie dish, we just take off the top layer. 
invert it, then peel this off. Gently, because we don't want to tear it. And then kind of just lift it so it can kind of nestle into the dish. It's plenty big, great. Now we've got all this extra dough around the edges. Do not cut that off. So just roll it and tuck it, and this is gonna be the edge of our pie. It's gonna be nice and thick. And then we're gonna flute it. This is also the pie crust that I used in my mock apple pie recipe. If you haven't seen that, that's another depression era recipe that uses Ritz crackers to make a mock apple pie. I'm a big fan of big flutes or little pleats or crenulations. Crenulations is not the correct word because that's like on a castle. Anyways, I like really deep flutes in my pie. So what I do is I take these two fingers here in my left hand and make a little kind of V and I use you know, one of my fingers and I just push in between like that. Go around, push in between. See? Around, push in between. Now, if you want it to be tighter, you just make the gap smaller. It's really up to you because again, this is your pie. Alrighty, so there's the beautiful pie crust. I'm gonna place this in the refrigerator and allow it to chill and get nice and cold while I prepare the filling. That's a great way when it comes to pies. If you don't want your pie crust to shrink, make sure that the crust is nice and chilled and cold and then that will reduce the shrinkage. Okay, be right back. So now we're ready to make the filling and the filling contains one cup of butter. Now, it does not specify if it should be melted, if it should be whatever, but it does say to cream the ingredients together, so I imagine the butter should not be cold. So I wanna share with you one of my favorite techniques to get butter to room temperature, because I never have the forethought or the preparation to have set out butter an hour in advance so that it becomes room temperature. So, here's my trick. Also, if you try putting it in the microwave, as some of you may know, you end up getting kind of a partly melted, partly cold piece of butter, which doesn't really help you when you're trying to get it to a creamy consistency required for baking, particularly cookies and cakes, etc. So here's my favorite technique. What you do is you take your cold butter, leave it in its wrapper, get yourself something to bludgeon with, get yourself some wax paper. This is the leftover wax paper that I use to roll out my pie crust. Put the butter inside and we proceed to beat the butter. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Get out all your aggressions. Onto your butter. So, now you've got butter that's probably about a half an inch thick. Let that sit right there. In about 10 minutes, that will be perfectly, perfectly creamy consistency. Super. One cup of sugar. Three eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and just beat this up first. So just the eggs and the sugar. Three tablespoons of flour. And now my one cup of butter. Doink. My other flat piece of butter into the bowl. Pinch of salt. Whoop. And now for the namesake of this pie, we're gonna add water. One cup of boiling water. So remember, there are three eggs in here. We don't want to curdle the eggs. So we're going to introduce the hot water slowly. That looks pretty watery, but we're ready to fill our pie now. Pour that into the pie. Looks pretty good, actually. Fits perfectly. It says to bake this at 350 degrees for an indeterminate amount of time. So I'm just gonna keep watching it, maybe 15, 20 minutes until the custard sets, and then I'll be back. Okay, see you in a little bit. Bye. 350 degrees, bingo, bango. Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back, and here is my beautiful water pie. And it turned out beautifully. Although I did have a bit of a crust cave in here and here, the recipe said specifically an unbaked pie shell. I think if I had blind baked this or baked it before I actually filled it, I might not have had this collapse. Still looks great. It took about 45 minutes to cook. The outside began to brown and the inside browned beautifully. And I think that has to do with the amount of butter that's in this 
pie and it looks great. So after I took it out of the oven, I allow it to cool on the countertop and then I put it in my refrigerator to allow it to cool completely. Whenever you have egg custard base recipe, I think it's always a good idea to allow it to cool completely to get rid of some of that eggy flavor. Otherwise it's gonna taste very, very eggy. I find that's true for pumpkin pies and any recipe that has lots of eggs in it. Let it cool completely. All right, I can't wait to tuck into this. Ooh. looks like a custard. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. It smells great. All right, here we go. All right, water pie. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Ooh, that is good. Mmm, really nice and buttery. A melt away, just ever so soft and supple, custardy texture. And it tastes a lot like a pudding on the inside in terms of the filling itself. It's slightly eggy sweet, but not overly so. But do you know what it really reminds me of? It reminds me of those tiny egg custards that you can get when you go to Chinatown. If you go to dim sum, you can order them. They are my favorite as a kid. They're small, about this big. They're little, basically miniature, personalized tarts that have an egg custard inside and they're sweet and delicious and the crust is flaky. That's what this reminds me of, absolutely. The crust is a little bit different. Traditionally, when you have the dantats, the crust is really flaky and doesn't have a buttery flavor. It's more shortening or lard-based, while this has a beautiful buttery flavor. Well, the bottom crust has absorbed some of the custard, so it has a little bit of tooth to it. Mm-hmm. It's slightly chewy. It's more like a cookie. I love the amount of salt in here. The salt really balances out the sugar and the butter. Alrighty, so there you have it, water pie, number one of the series of my desperation pies. Let me know in the comments if there are other recipes or other pies you'd like me to test out or try. Share this video with your friends, follow me on social media, subscribe, like, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye! <laughs>